welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. All right, so I have a couple of balls in the air here when it comes to making custom costume builds. Specifically, I'm making my War Mage and my Corrupted Druid. In today's episode, I'm hoping to dive more into that Corrupted Druid build. So far, we have the staff, the gorget, his messed up clothes, and also the bear mask. This and that staff, I still love how they came out. They're so dope. They're one of my favorite builds. Okay, so the character art here, made by Middle Miss Red, shows that he's wearing this awesome kind of leather cape with a fur mane and spikes coming out. It looks really cool. And that is the piece that I'm aiming for for this build. It's gonna be like a leather cape with like holes for your, for your arms and then a big old mane with some kind of spikes coming off of it. All right, I think the stage is set well enough. Let's just jump right in and level up this skill. Making templates. Okay, so thanks to various other kinds of projects I've done on this channel so far, I'm getting pretty comfortable with the process here. Specifically, using like some scrap material or some cheaper fabrics in order to make a template for, for some kind of costume build. Also, thanks to this prior episode up here, I have this mannequin that's gonna help me with this build. J just help, nothing else. I don't have to explain myself to you. Now for the scrap material, I have this leftover felt that I used when I made my assassin's cloak. Using some tailor's chalk, I outlined the back panel of this piece, marking out around the neck, along the shoulder lines, around the arms, and the seams under the arms. Then I cut this shape out using the good scissors. At this point, I don't care what my wife says. These are my, my scissors. I've used them more than her. Manifest destiny, I say. Now it's okay at this stage if the template is cut out a little bit larger or, or kind of messy, we're gonna have plenty of time to correct this. Just don't cut it too small. That's gonna make life a little bit harder. Now using some pins, I attach that back panel to my mannequin just to see if I like the layout. And this is kind of where I wanna make sure that everything is even and straight. So seeing how it like lines up underneath uh, like my arm where the ribs will be, along the shoulders, just making sure all those lines are the same. All right, with that looking good, I started in on those front panels. Now that front is gonna be made up of two pieces, a left panel and a right panel that'll attach to those seams that are on the back panel. Now because they are the same, I decided to drape the fabric and make my marks on only one side. This I did really roughly using those seams from the back panel to kind of cut where I thought those would have to be. Then to hone that shape in, I pinned that panel in place so it was underneath the back panel. Doing this allowed me to use those seams from the back panel to chalk up my marks. Now I can be sure that everything is gonna fit perfectly together. Laying that panel on top of more fabric to use as a template, I was able to cut out a second piece with identical measurements. Now, in case I haven't mentioned it before, you always wanna leave a little bit of extra room from your lines for seam allowance. This is just where you take your two seams and you put them together so you have somewhere to sew. If you don't leave that extra seam allowance, your whole garment ends up being a little bit smaller than you measured it out to be. And pinning all of this to the dummy, I love the look. The shape of it was just like the drawing already, so that that had me kinda jazzed. Cause as usual, I'm just, I'm just kinda flying by the seat of my pants here. But that's the fun thing about what we do here because everything's starting to make sense. Like, fake it till you make it. I'm finally starting to learn how this all goes. But cool, with that template all set, it's time to make it leather. Real quick commercial break sponsored by me. I don't have sponsors yet. If you like what I do here and you'd like to see this channel grow, please consider joining our Patreon. All the different tiers come with different benefits and honestly, I can't do this without my patrons. You guys really help the channel run. So yeah, if you want to see this channel grow, please consider doing that. Link in the description below. Back to it! Okay, so I wanted this piece to kind of flow and move with me. Sort of a, a druid casual kind of feel. To this end, I picked up this beautiful piece of light brown chrome tan leather from Tandy. I should stop saying Tandy's name since I learned that they don't, they don't do sponsorship deals. Broke my heart, Tandy. Broken. That being said, this piece was only half price because it was all marred up and scratched and there were holes in it, which honestly is perfect for my purposes here because this druid is, he's in a swamp and everything's getting corrupted and, and it's, it's perfect. It's exactly what I'm looking for. So to get this moving, I started by laying those templates onto my spread out leather. Now notice those panels are marked, you know, left, right, back. This is just to make sure I have the right sides facing up so all of them have the grain side. And leather the grain side is the smooth side here where the flesh side is that rough side on the back. 
by marking those clearly, I'm able to make sure that I don't accidentally make it so like one side has the flesh side with the wrong side up. That would really piss me off. Now from here, I just use some masking tape to lock those templates into place and then carefully cut those panels out. Cool, at this point, all the pieces are cut out and ready to be put together. That being said, I really wanted to test it out before I committed to sewing it because once you put holes in leather, there, there's holes in leather, there's nothing you can do about it. So I used these clips to temporarily put those seams together. This way I could try this bad boy on and see how it fits. And I loved it, it was so cool. Though it's a really good thing I did try it on first because if you look at these shoulder seams here, they're not quite lining up. One side is definitely larger than the other. No worries though, that's why we test. Seeing that, I was able to clip the excess with some scissors to mark them. I also made these little snips along the seams to help me align the edges while sewing later. That's actually a little trick I learned with one of the last builds I did for the Druid one where I learned how to sew a shirt. Those little clips really help you not get lost while trying to figure out how things line up. With that all marked out, I just trimmed those shoulders to size. Then I got to sewing the panels together, giving it about a half inch seam allowance. Now, if you want to learn how to use your home sewing machine to sew leather, check out this video here. But once all sewed up, I tried this bad boy on and I love the results. The fit was perfect, the shape was exactly what I wanted, and honestly, it was really easy to put together. I did, however, decide that I wanted to roll the edges just to add a little bit of extra strength and make everything look more finished. Now, I could have sewn it together, but I didn't want to have a stitch line on everything, and honestly, I was a bit too lazy for that. So instead, I just added a little bit of contact cement, about a half of an inch in, all along the edge. Then I folded it in on itself and used a mallet to ensure a strong bond. That's a small detail, but it really adds a lot to the look. Just gives it a way more finished appearance. And I am in love with how this thing came out. It looks slick and not only that, but the like flowy slash weightiness of the leather makes it super dynamic while you jump and move and poorly execute kicks. Honestly, feel free to give me crap in the comment section about my horrible kung fu. Maybe we should, maybe should try more, like, drunken kung fu. Now, this costume will demand that I really weather and stress out this leather. I mean, if you look at what I did to that shirt I ended up sewing, you'll know what I mean. It's pretty roughed up. But I actually think that would make a cool episode by itself, like how to really weather leather. Weather leather. Nice. It's the simple things. So yeah, that'll be a whole other episode. For now though, let's move on to the main event. Now my cursed druid's title is the Bear of Murkarth. Check out this little animated feature we made here to see his story. But basically as the corruption from the evil entity that's imprisoned in his staff takes over, he becomes more bear-like. As such, the fur that lines his cloak becomes this really kind of hunchback bear pelt of a thing. To make it, I decided to use this faux fur that I just kind of had lying around. My wife had used it to make decorative pillows. There's roughly a yard of this stuff, but it did have like pillow shaped patches gone. But it looked good and I'm cheap, so we're going with it. Now, because I wanted this to have a whole bunch of body, I decided actually not to cut it, but rather fold it in on itself. Then I just used some clips so it maintained the shape that I was able to fold out. And this really helped me to lay it out on my table so I could refine that shape, making sure all my folds were even and everything looked clean. Now, because I was doing it this way and that scrap piece of fur was so uneven, I didn't wanna like sew those together. I didn't have enough for that seam allowance. So I decided to cheat and just use some tacky fabric glue to hold down those folds. Doing this also gave me the opportunity to add some scrap pieces to the open areas so it looked more finished underneath. That glue holds really strong and it's not like those pieces are gonna get a lot of wear and tear being pulled apart, so I think that's actually gonna be just fine. Now before I glued the collar area into place, I laid in this three inch by eight inch, four ounce piece of edge tan leather to help make it more rigid. Then I just glue that all together as well. And this actually worked out really well, giving me kind of this high collar. Now the shape is looking slick right here and exactly what I wanted it to look like. Though there was this one bit that I did not care for. The fur on the back of this thing had this kind of two-tone effect. And the line between the light side and the dark side was way too defined. It just looked silly. It looked like two different pieces of fur were kind of meshed together. 
The fix for this was super easy though. All I had to do was add some black leather dye to a brush and then used a paper towel to make sure there wasn't a lot of excess on there. Then I just started kind of tapping it around that line to give it a bit more transition. And this worked super well and helped that look a lot. Like for some reason on camera that, that black has a bit of a purplish tinge, but it doesn't in real life. It looks perfect. That transition came out really nice. Okay, now on the drawing, they have spikes kind of coming out in random places on this thing. I toyed with maybe making them out of foam or carving something, but then I remembered I had purchased some antlers. This is one of those Etsy buys on a whim too, like with the stuff I make, I bet I'll need some antlers, right? I was right. And looking at it, I thought I can kind of double it up and make it a bit of a clasp for my cloak. Give me these really cool spikes that come off the shoulders and almost like a collarbone look to the middle of it. To actually make it a clasp and hold it together, all I did was wrap some leather cordage around one end and make a little loop with it so that it'll slide around the end of the other antler. Super simple, but worked really well, actually. Okay, now to actually hold it onto that faux fur, posed a real challenge for me. The problem is that the antlers, they're weighty, and if you just kind of stitch it or, or put some kind of um, wrap around it, it tends to move because the fabric doesn't have any real support for it. Now, after toying with a bunch of different options, I decided I could use these strips of chrome tan leather to help hold it into place. To position it, I wrapped them around the horns and then added a piece of this double-sided tape to the wrap so I could place it where I wanted it and it would stay in place. I locked it in with pins as well to keep it extra secure and cut out these squares of veg tan leather to act as a backing. Using my pronged punch, I made holes through everything and locked it all into place with some thread. With that all set, all I had to do was use some contact adhesive on the leather and wrap them around the antlers to hold everything in place. And I love this collarbone look. I'm getting truly druidy vibes from it so far, but I think we can go a little bit further with the look. So to add to the effect, I used an awl to punch holes above and below that wrap and spiral some cordage through the whole thing, tying it in a rough knot in the back. Not only does that look cool, but it also added some extra rigidity to the whole thing. Finally, I used some more cordage to wrap these tails in a couple places to kind of make them more interesting to look at and puffy, and then added in some dangling chicken bones from last night's rotisserie dinner. And this really brings home that corrupted druid look. And check him out! This constitutes a huge part of the outfit, and with it in place, that look really starts to come together. Look at that crazy bastard. I am so excited with how this whole build is coming out. I can't wait until it's all done and together, and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Maybe go to Ren Fairs, cosplay? You guys leave me in the comment section what I can do with this awesome costume. Now, I love this build. If you at least liked what you saw here today, please hit me with some of that like and love, and do not forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Let me just take a second to shout out my amazing Discord community and some of the stuff they've been working on. I feel like I say this every single time we show off the skills they have, but this community never fails to impress me. They do a little bit of everything from leather projects to woodworking to making things with fabric, right down to making music together. There's a bar channel where people sing and hang out and it is fantastic. I love this community and I love all of you for being part of it. If you wanna join the conversation, check out the link below and join our Discord community. And again, big thanks to our Patreon members. Without you, none of this would be possible. You're the only way I can afford to keep this show running. So thank you so much for all you do. We cover a lot of stuff here. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see me cover specifically, why don't you leave it down in the comment section and I will add it to the list. All right, I gotta get going. This bear is gonna need some claws. In the meantime though, keep leveling up you.